Blog Talk Radio. <laughs> I'm your host, Candace Craw Goldman. This program was created to assist humans in this rapidly changing world. And while it is expanding into new realms, it is based on the foundation of the late, great Dolores Cannon's work. So thank you, dear Dolores, for continuing to encourage us to explore new directions. Also, thanks to Greg Prescott and Michelle Walling at N5D.com for making this show possible. With humanity's new understanding and acceptance of the quantum world and the role that consciousness plays in shaping both our individual and our collective reality, we have plenty of subject material. I am a full-time practitioner of Dolores' hypnosis method and have the honor and distinct privilege of working with and alongside of her for several years. You can find out more about my practice of quantum healing, my consulting and coaching services at newearthjourney.com. I'd like to mention I'm offering my own new quantum healing service available remotely. Call or email me about how we can create your very own unique quantum healing process. And lastly, before we get started tonight, for those of you looking for a practitioner of Dolores' method of quantum healing, You may find these wonderful people at this address, Dolores Cannon, QHHT.com. That's Dolores Cannon, QHHT.com. And also, if you'd like to participate live on the show tonight, please call in the U.S. The number is 646-716-8890. That's 646-716-8890. And I really hope you all think about calling in tonight. I don't have a guest, so I'd like to hear some other voices on the show this evening. Tonight is January 22nd, 2016, and it's going to be a very interesting show. We're going to be talking about the Mandela Effect. And I'd like to take a moment to invite any practitioner of Dolores' method, especially invite you, to call in and share some of your stories that focus on multiple timelines or parallel dimensions. So we kind of need to start out by defining what the Mandela effect is, for those of you who have not heard it before. So what is it? The, the Mandela effect apparently real Um, alternate memories of a history that doesn't match the documented history in our current reality. And what causes the Mandela effect? Well, you don't know. Some people think it's holodeck. Some people think we have a glitch in the matrix. A lot of people think we're in alternate and shifting reality. I actually went to Wikipedia just to see how they would define the Mandela effect. And they don't even recognize the Mandela effect at all, which tells you something about Wikipedia. And I put Mandela effect in the box, the search box, and up came the word confabulation. (laughs) So I found this was kind of funny. So if you don't know what the word confabulation means, 
Um, here's the definition. Confabulation or to confabulate. It's a memory disturbance defined as the production of fabricated, distorted, or misrepresented memories about oneself or the world without the conscious intention to deceive. Basically, people are believing the fact that they're wrong. Individuals who confabulate present incorrect memory ranging from subtle alterations to bizarre fabrications and are generally very confident about their recollection despite contradictory evidence. So where did this term come from? There's a woman, her name is Fiona Broom, and she actually runs a website called the Mandela Effect. Dot com. And she posted this post long ago, and this is how it started. So I'm going to kind of read her story. So Nelson Mandela, a quite famous person in our recent history in South Africa, died in prison long before his loss on December 5th, 2013. Many people... Perhaps thousands of people seem to believe that. And that's where the title of her website and her upcoming book came from. So here is her story. Fiona Wright. See, I thought Nelson Mandela died in prison. I thought I remembered it clearly, complete with news clips of his funeral, the morning in South Africa, some rioting in cities, and the heartfelt speech by his widow. And then he found out He was still alive. Her reaction was the very sensible, oh, I must have misunderstood something on the news. And she tucked it away in her head, and she didn't think about it for a really long time. And then she got into a group of people where they were talking about um, some other people remembering that he died in prison. So it caught her attention in a hurry. And then she says, one thing led to another, and I discovered a large community of people who remember the same Mandela history that I recall. And others have false memories. Uh, One of the recent ones that she describes, and I have this memory personally, is uh, the death of Billy Graham. Although some people claim that they're confusing it with his wife, she clearly remembers the funeral of Mr. Graham being broadcast on television on all the networks. And I really remember that too. And it's not just death. So people have a variety of odd conflicts between their vivid memories of the world that they're living in now versus the one that they remember. So we're going to talk about some of that tonight. So just for fun, if you would like, Take out a pen and pencil right now and a piece of paper or click on your notes app in your phone. Let's take a little quiz, shall we? The Mandela Effect quiz. And I actually just found this on the Internet. Um, I believe it's called uh, a website called The Truth Lantern. And it's not – it wasn't put up very many days ago. A lot of people are talking about this here in 2016. I've gotten this this quiz straight from straight from there, but it's it's of the um, most prevalent topics in this mysterious thing that we're calling the Mandela effect. So, so here's the quiz. There's eleven questions. See how you compare to what recorded history says is the reality now. So, number one question is. There's a popular children's book series and later television program created by husband and wife team Stan and Jan involving a family of lovable bears. The answer is the what bears? The Bernstein bears, right? So, but how do you spell it? (laughs) So write your answer down. The next question is, There's a 90s book and subsequent movie starring Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt, created by gothic fiction novelist Anne Rice. So the answer is what? Interview with blank vampire. So 
So what's your answer to that one? Number three, during the famous bridge scene between Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader in The Empire Strikes Back, what phrase did Darth Vader say to Luke? And the answer is blank. I am your father. So what would you put in that blank? Number four, we go further back into history for this one. Back to early Disney movies. It said, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, the evil queen summons her mirror with what iconic phrase? Blank mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? What would you put in the blank? Number five, I'm going to go to TV now. This hit HBO series ran from 1998 to 2004 and followed the lives of four New York City bachelorettes. The show and their later movies starred Sarah Jessica Parker and Kim Cattrall. So the answer is sex blank the city. What word would you put in there? In the widely popular PBS program, we have question number six, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. So I was an older kid when Mr. Rogers came out, but I remember this vividly. Fred Rogers would open his show with a theme song with the following lyrics. It's a beautiful day in blank neighborhood. It's a beautiful day blank neighborhood. Now we're getting to number seven, a popular breakfast cereal. Toucan Sam was on the box. The answer was blank loops, fruit loops. So how do you spell fruit, right? Number eight, and I didn't even know about this one until doing the research, um, but I, um, I have the uh, incorrect memory of this one. Let's see if you do. In the movie The Field of Dreams, what audible phrase did Kevin Costner's character, Ray, hear while being in his cornfield? The answer is, if you build it, blank will come. If you build it, blank will come. Another movie, Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump, what did he say when he's sitting on the park bench? Life blank like a box of chocolate. You never know what you're going to get. Life blank, like a box of chocolates. Number 10, in the movie Jaws, Chief Brody sees the massive great white shark for the first time and tells shark hunter Quint the following, blank, going to need a bigger boat. And the last question is also a movie. A very old movie for some of you out there. The very famous scene, Gone with the Wind, Scarlett O'Hara says the following to Rhett Butler that causes him to respond with, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. And the answer is, blank shall I go. Blank shall I do. So let's go back and look at your answers, shall we? Number one, what was... The children's book, and I think these were started, um, these were written in the early 60s, 1963, the Berenstain Bears. So the Berenstain Bears, the Mandela effect with it is how the word Berenstain, the name Berenstain, is spelled. So the recorded history we were living in right now says that Berenstain is B-E-R-E-N-S-T. T-A-I-N, like a stain, like a stain. Now, most people remember it the way I remember it, which is B-E-R-E-N-E-I-N. And I really remember that. I, I vividly remember that. I remember seeing it on television. I remember thinking about it because I was in elementary school, and I still, to this day, get my E's and I's mixed up in words. And I remember thinking that Berenstain looked a little bit like Frankenstein, and I tried to figure it out with the E's and the I's back when I was a little kid. Um, But it's not. It is S-T-A-I-N, like a stain. 
And that's the accepted way that it's spelled, and that is the reality that we're living in right now. And just to go ahead and tell you, of, of these 11 things, all of them are wrong as far as my, my history. So let's see if you all think that. So number two, the number two question about the book and the movie with Tom Cruise and, and Brad Pitt. It's called Interview with the Vampire. Now that's not how I remember it. And I remember reading that book too. The book was Interview with a Vampire. And just think about it. It, it changes everything about the title of the book. If it's a vampire, that means there's lots of vampires out there, right? And if it's the vampire, then it's like it's a single vampire. It changes the whole feeling of the book and the movie. All right, so number three, back to Star Wars, right? There's even T-shirts, I think, out there where it says, blank, I am your father. He says, Luke, I am your father, right? I mean, you can think about all the little kids, you know, wearing the, the Darth Vader mask saying that at Halloween, right? Luke, I am your father, but it's not that. In the movie, if you go replay that clip, he says, no, I am your father. And that's just so wrong, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, number four. Mirror, mirror on the wall is how I remember it. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest one of all? In the movie, it's actually the, the Wicked Queen says, magic mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest one of all? So that one's wrong in, in my history anyway. Okay, back to television. It is sex and the city, but that's not how I remember it. Most people remember it the way I do, I think, and sex in the city. Sex in the city. Again, it changes the entire feel of the title with the swapping out of those two words. Okay, now we're to number six. I mean, I can just hear Mr. Rogers singing this, right? It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. You know what? It's not. He sings, it's a beautiful day in this neighborhood. In this neighborhood? When did they change it to this? It's always been the neighborhood, at least in my reality stream. Okay, so uh, Fruit Loops. F-R-O-O-T-L-O-O-P-S. And most remember it spelled just the regular way, like fruit. Number eight. If you build it, blank will come. If you build it, they will come, right? All of them, all of the baseball players coming out of the cornfield. It was a great line in that movie. No, the line is, if you build it, he will come. Hmm. That's not how I remember it. How about you guys? Number nine, Forrest Gump movie. The line actually exists. Life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. It's almost all of us remember. Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. All right. So Jaws. The line is, you're going to need a bigger boat. That's not how I remember it. We're going to need a bigger boat. It was an inclusive statement. And I remember that very vividly myself. Okay. And the very last question in our quiz, number 11, gone with the wind. I mean, you can just hear her say this, I think, Scarlett O'Hara. The line is, where shall I go? What shall I do? But almost Everybody remembers it completely different and remembers it this way. Wherever shall I go, whatever shall I do. So every one of those 11 different things I have a mis-memory of, or so those who believe in confabulation would, be, would believe. But what's really going on here? I mean... Truly, what's going on here? Is it just kind of mass 
mistakes, mass mistaking in memory. There's several theories about what might be going on, and, and we'll talk about them, but I want to talk about one more subject. And, and this, this exchange came, I believe, on uh, the MandelaEffects.com website, but it, it explains how vivid and detailed and deep these these memories are if they're misremembered, then people are misremembering them exactly. So remember back, and I'm going to forget the year, so forgive me for that, but Tiananmen Square, the Chinese and the, the man, the boy actually, that stood before the tank, that stood before the line of tanks. And we all watched the news footage of that. We're going to call him Tank Boy right now. So the following is some memories by people who recall that the tank boy was run over and killed in that scene. Now, in my reality stream, the one I'm from, he, he did not get run over. The tank stopped, and he was considered a, a hero, and uh, that, that's where the tank stopped. But there's a, another reality stream where the tank just kept going. And here's some memories of that. And it shows, and the memory is from different people. So it sort of shows how, how this is across the board, that the memories match. So one gal says, I remember Tank Boy getting run over by the tank at Tiananmen Square. My husband doesn't. We Googled it, and apparently he didn't get run over. She says, I have a very vivid memory, though. I remember seeing a video of it. I remember learning this in seventh grade history. And several people agreed. Another gal says, I remember Tank Boy getting run over, too. My partner and I were talking about that. And I mentioned how horrible it was that he was killed. And my partner had no memory and thought I was crazy. We had to go on YouTube to show me that he lived. And as I watched, I had no recollection of that event of him living. And this one fellow, very interestingly, James says, same here. I remember seeing blood on the street after the tank rolled over him and how the backlash nearly caused communism to fall apart in China. And then they switched to the capitalistic command economy. This is so weird. More people. I clearly remember him getting run over the tank. Other people saying, wait a second, what are you talking about? He didn't get run over? And then this Miss Fiona from the website says, I remember the tank boy being famous exactly because he was killed by that tank. And this is a memory of a news event. Another person said, I also remember him being run over. I remember it especially because of how they described how they died. Heads popping like melons. It was such a horror for me at the time that an authority could harm its own nonviolent citizens. At the time, the story was the one guy held back the tanks as long as the photographers and newscasters were there. Once they left Whammo, all the paths were, were squashed. What's interesting about this thread, and if you want to go over to MandelaEffect.com and, and look this over, this is um, somebody who you know gets intrigued by this and then does some research, and he remembers it. He remembers watching it in school, and he remembers some news footage of, his, of the tank boy's friends dragging his lifeless body away. And he even finds a link. He finds a link to a video that's supposed to show him getting run over. But then the video is dis- disappears. And then people are remembering the bloodshed. But then WikiLeaks says that that's not true. And there's somebody even now calling it the Tiananmen myth. And then there's another video that disappears that it's supposed to, where it's supposed to have happened and it's gone. So it seems to be a very vivid memory for a lot of people. And they are confused when history doesn't support the facts the way they remember it. So how about you out there? How did you do on the quiz? 
What do you think about these things? So what's going on here? So, again, a lot of people think it's this holodeck thing, that we all are in something like a holodeck and we're creating our own realities, each one of us. And the only real reality and the only real history is yours anyway. And our holodecks can, can merge and, and cross over. And then there's the idea that um, it's the matrix, you know, and there's glitches in the matrix. And those glitches show up as these inconsistencies. Some other people think CERN has something to do with this, right? The, something about that or even space travel itself might have something to do with how our reality is recorded and remembered by our brains. And speaking of space travel, how many of you out there recall how many times humans have landed on the moon? This is a fascinating one to ask as well. I didn't even see this one on the Mandela Effect, but I, I've talked about it in groups before. Just last weekend, I did a group regression here in Kansas, and that was one of the hot topics for the group. We were discussing this, and we went around and, and asked everyone in the in the room how many times humans have landed, actually physically, people, you know, bodies, human bodies landed on the planet Earth. And you can go into the conspiracy theory whether or not we re ever really did land on the moon or not or whether it was staged by Spielberg or whatever. But, but assuming we did land on the moon, what do, what do our history books say? And in my personal reality, we only landed on the moon one time with humans, only one time. And we sent up, um, yes, there was many other Apollo missions, but they just did orbit. And then there was unmanned rovers. And I know that I was talking to my husband about that, and he has a much different memory of how many times, several, I believe. Some people have guessed up to 12. You know, so from one to three to five, six, nine, and even 12 different times we've been on the moon. And in my memory, there was a lunar rover, but it was unmanned, and it was, you know, piloted by the people in in the uh, Apollo ship that was orbiting the moon and not anything that had landed on the moon. So that was really, really crazy for me to hear that people thought that we've landed on the moon so many different times. Um, I, I remember listening to news reports where people would talk, because I've always been interested in, in space and space exploration and the space program, and I remember the talking heads talking about how, you know, we only had to really put people on, the, on that surface of the moon one time because, everything else could be done remotely and, and they didn't need to go to the extreme of landing there plus putting the astronauts in a harm's way um, and having to have them blast off, et cetera. I mean, I remember them talking about that, that there wasn't any value more than just the one time them landing on the moon. So what do you all think? Okay. So let me see here. What have I got to talk about? Well, I tell you what. How about we um, we listen to a little clip that I have here. Um, I was doing some research, and I found a clip of Dolores Cannon. And this, I believe she was speaking at the Transformation Conference in 2013. So it was her second to the last Transformation Conference. And she was talking a little bit about how, um, how some of this may be coming about. This may be due to parallel dimensions or parallel realities. And I thought it would be fun to listen to Dolores talk a little bit about how time works. So let's see if I can get this going. One thing has to do with parallel universes, parallel dimensions, parallel lifetimes. And when I first got this concept, it was a real mind bender. 
Now, you know, to keep it simple at first, everything is energy. Everything. So when you make a decision, you come to a crossroads in your life, you've got to make a decision. Do I get married? Do I get divorced? Do I take this job? Do I go to this school? You're trying to make a decision which road you want to go down. We have these crossroads. And you know, either way you choose, your life is going to be different, won't it? If you marry this person, or you don't, or if you get a divorce, or if I choose this job, should I move? Your life will be different no matter which direction you go. So you're trying to make a decision. And you have a lot of energy going into making that decision. Then you finally decide, okay, this is the way I'm going to go. All right. What happens to the other alternate decision that you could have taken? What happens to that? It also is created. And another you is living out that other decision. And that gets a little complicated for people. You're living on this life, and you're focusing on your decision you made. But another you split off over here and is living that other life. And we're not supposed to know about it because it would be too complicated. That's what they say. You can't know it all. Imagine how complicated it would be if you knew about these other parts having all these other experiences. I have clients that come to me and they'll say, you know, I know I'm living in another existence in another city and I have another family even. I occasionally peek in on them. And they have said, this is possible, but you're not supposed to do that because it would cause interference. Because the other reality is not aware of what's going on over here. Now, I hope I'm sending you on what I'm going to get here. These are a lot of complicated concepts. Now, that's the simple thing, way of explaining this. It can also get much more complicated. If it splits like that, it also means every time you make any decision of any kind, it will split again and again and again and again. There are finally, there's hundreds of yous living all these different realities. I think you'll understand a lot of this stuff because he's getting it too. But, um, I know it's hard to accept, so we don't dwell on it. That's why I called the book Light Candy. Read it, you know, well, it's interesting. Then you got to put the book down and go on about your own life. So that was fun to hear Dolores. And it kind of talks a little bit about this decision thing. So I've heard Dolores talk a little bit about this. So it's decision, you know, but that it's decisions that take you from one universe to another. And sure, the big decision, but that's what's really interesting when you think about it and you start talking about the small decisions. So small decisions, even like, should I turn down this road or this road to get to town today, if both roads will take you into town? Dolores says every single decision you make, every single one changes the path you go down. It to be what kind of socks you put on, <laughs> you know, it may change. Every single decision changes something. So what I thought I'd do now is um, I don't see anybody really wanting to talk about their experiences with, with the quiz or anything. So I thought what I would do is talk about some of how we in um, – Dolores Cannon's original support forum community, those of us who get together and talk about this stuff every day, all the time, (laughs) for years and years, some of the things that we talk about and how they connect in 
with our sessions. So this this whole thing, this whole idea of the Mandela effect is probably, you know, reality stream. So that's, you know, that's our best guess. Parallel dimensions, they crisscross. Um, so I had some collected stories here from some different practitioners, including one of my own, uh, that I'd like to talk to you about. Um, and I think I'm just going to go ahead and start with the story uh, of my own session. And this, this is mostly, this story will talk about how, um, this talks about dis- decisions and how it changes your reality. So this young man came to see me for a, a quantum healing session And he came from quite a ways, and and he came with his mother. And his main complaint was that he had severe anxiety and type 1 diabetes. He had to check his blood sugar several times a day. He was using insulin. He was a college-age student. And the first thing that I did was to find out whether or not um, the young man was there of his own volition because his mother did all the research, made the appointment, all of that. You know, the mother did all the communication. And that always sends up a red flag to me. And, I, you know, I asked lots of questions, made sure that, that the young man wanted to, to show up himself. She assured me he was just very busy in college, um, that he was interested in all of this. She was just making all the arrangements. They came from, um, from quite a bit away. They, they made a plane trip into Kansas. So I, want, I needed to make sure that he was going to be there. And after... They came to the office, and the mother left, and after a long talk and interview, the young man that I called Chris, he really was quite keen on the whole idea of exploring his consciousness. He was very willing, interested. I mean, he really wanted to be there, so I could tell that it was all right for us to do the session. And Chris had really nearly an idyllic childhood. His parents were kind and loving he really didn't have anything to talk about as far as report, uh, you know, reporting fights or disagreements or big to-dos like that. He had siblings that he loved and cared for. His early schooling was uneventful. He had a stead- steady girlfriend. He was in a stable relationship. He had this um, hobby of working on old cars, especially old farm trucks. And he was in this Ivy League school at great expense and sacrifice to his parents. He was an above-average student, but he really had to work hard to keep up his grades, and he wasn't at all interested in the subject he was studying, mechanical engineering. He got into mechanical engineering school in a very prestigious school, but he didn't want to be there. He was fairly good at the subject, and he passed his exam. It was a tough program. And he was only about halfway through the program that his parents were thrilled that he was there. So the story was is that his diabetes came out of nowhere while he was still in high school, in the latter part of high school, getting ready to go to college. There was no history of it in his family. It was managed by insulin and frequent blood sugar tests throughout the day. And his anxiety came and went, and he had medication for that as well, but he didn't like to use it. So we have this session, and he easily went into a deep trance state. And in his session, he found himself walking along this beautiful wooded path, and he seemed to be a young man, much like himself. As a matter of fact, he kind of thought he was just himself. You know, he's just me, he would say. Describing the peace and tranquility he was observing. He was alone, but not lonely. And he was extremely happy to be headed to where he was going. We weren't sure what that was, but we just followed his footsteps. And pretty soon he came upon a building and he walked inside. And when he walked in, I remember his face. He was just beaming, absolutely beaming. It was a well-appointed, very clean, brightly lit garage And in the middle of this garage was a beautiful old yellow farm truck, and it was in the end stages of refurbishing. And the chrome was shiny, the paint perfect, and it gleamed in the sunlight. And 
he wasn't still quite sure about this shop. You know, he's wandering around the shop. He's not sure about it. But suddenly it comes to his mind that this shop is actually his shop because everything there is exactly what he likes. Everything there is um, set up the way he likes it. The music coming <clears throat> over the um, speakers in the, in the shop is, is his. It's his project. The view out into the woods is one that he would dream about. He's extremely content. He's joyously working on these old vehicles in solitude. I mean, he just has like the perfect day, right? So in Dolores' method, we always ask them to the high self, the higher self later, you know, why did they show him this life, this, these scenes? And the higher self said that this was Chris's dream and vision of the perfect future of his perfect life, the life he wanted to create for himself to experience pure joy. It wanted him to feel fully what it would be like to follow his joy, being completely in charge of his own projects, his own time and his own space. This was this young man's dream. He wanted to refurbish old farm trucks. We then asked for a body scan and asked about the diabetes and anxiety. The higher self explained that the diabetes was brought on as a result of the decision, and then here we go to these, these um, parallel realities, right? The diabetes was brought on by a decision Chris made in high school to live his life as his parents had in mind for him to live. So he wasn't living for himself. He was denying and crushing his own dream in order to try to please them. He loved his parents very much, and they loved him very much. And this is actually, you know, quite a wonderful thing for, uh, to find out in this session. So many people have, have disturbing things, disturbing relationships, and lots of abuse um, out there and, and fights and conflicts. But this, this family was nothing more than loving but he loved his parents so much. He made the decision to go to mechanical engineering school to fulfill the dream they had for him, not his own dream. He didn't want to dis- disappoint them in any way. He loved them so much. So when we asked about the anxiety, it had to do with the schooling itself. He was forcing himself to do the work, forcing himself to take the test forcing himself to even be on campus around so many people because he really craved solitude, creative solitude. He did not enjoy any part of it. All of his activities were dreaded. Deep down, Chris wanted to quit school in the worst way and just get on with his true passion of working on old cars and trucks. But he kept that passion locked up like a prisoner inside of him. And it manifested the diabetes. And those of you out there who, uh, you know, Louise Hay and different body systems, um, denying yourself the sweetness of life. Young, young man, 19 years old with diabetes. So I asked Chris's high self what he could do about that. And the higher self said, he should tell his parents he wants to and needs to quit mechanical engineering school for his optimum health and happiness. And I asked, how should he do this? And higher self said he should tell his mother when they're on the plane trip back home that soon. And I made sure, you know, exactly. He should tell the mother first then before the father? Yes, on the plane. And they can talk with the father when they arrive home. The higher self was very adamant. Talk on the plane home. So I asked. I asked lots of questions. So even though he's halfway through the, the degree, He shouldn't finish it. He should quit right away. The higher self said, yes, he can completely eliminate his diabetes and anxiety if he just quits school immediately. So I asked, can you please heal the diabetes and anxiety right now? Can you adjust the organs so they maintain the correct blood sugar balance? The higher self said the anxiety is already gone. It completely left him when we showed him the workshop in the woods. So it left his physical body during this hypnosis session when he just simply saw the woods. We can and we will heal and adjust the pancreas function to improve the diabetic condition, but we will not complete that healing until he leaves mechanical engineering school and begins to pursue his passion. 
But I brought it up, you know, that point. I said his parents were very interested in his education, interested in completing his mechanical engineering degree. It's going to cause a great disruption in the family for him to quit school. And the higher self said the happiness and health of Chris is dependent upon him living his life for himself and his own dreams. This will cause sadness at first for the parents, but they have a good and loving relationship. They will soon understand it's for his very best. I asked, is there anything else specifically Chris should do once he quits school? And the higher self said, yes, he should immediately enroll in a Botex school to hone his skills on auto restoration. So this is when it gets interesting. When Chris sat up out of trance, he was exuding calmness and happiness. He remembered most of the part of the session where he was in the woods and exploring the workshop and the content. He relayed more details and talked about how good it felt in there. It was his very own workshop. He talked extensively about the colors and the gleaming chrome and the feeling of peace and solitude that the woods surrounded the building gave him. He didn't really remember as much about the details when the higher self was speaking. But we talked about that, and I told him what it had said. And when we talked about it specifically, and I said, you know, your, your higher self says you should just quit school. You, your health will return. You know, you'll be happy. And he said, my parents would be crushed if I quit, quit mechanical engineering school. He was surprised that his high self said, go to the Botech school. But he just started arguing with me. He started saying, you know, my parents aren't going to go for that. You don't know how hard this has been. And he said this with real love. You don't know how hard it's been for my parents. They even took on part-time jobs to pay for my schooling. So all I could do was to tell him to listen to his session recording carefully and to make his own decision, you know. And as amazing as this method is is at uncovering what purpose is, what our higher self wishes for us, you know, we, we still here on this planet have our own free will. So we gave a call to his mom to tell him, the session was over and she could come get him. And so she showed up. And I asked Chris how he felt as we were waiting for for her to show up. And he said, I feel really great, especially when I think about the shop and the yellow truck. But then his smile kind of turned upside down, but I don't know how I'm going to tell my mom I went to quit school. And his mom walked into the office beaming too. And she says, did it work? Did it work? And I smiled. And I said, I'll let, Chris be the one to tell you all about it. It's not my place to tell anybody about what goes on in the session except for, um, you know, to talk about it with the client. So off they went. And I got an email a few weeks later from Chris. He told me he was feeling much better. His blood sugar level had normalized so much after the session. He needed little to no insulin for many days afterwards. And it was greatly improved from before our visit. But, he said, it's starting to spike up again. So he wanted to know what he should do about that. So I asked the big question. I asked him if he quit school yet. And he said no. I asked him if he told his parents what the higher self said about what to do to be healthy and happy. And he said no. He just couldn't do that to him. He loved him too much. So I still don't know how that story ended for Chris. I mean, I hope at some point, someday, he will see, or that maybe he did see, because this this happened, oh, maybe a couple years ago, this particular session. Um, I hope he did end up quitting school. So that's how a decision, a big decision, changes a lifestyle. And in some parallel life, he is in that workshop working on those trucks, just very, very happy. But in the reality stream where he calls me back, uh, you know, you know, he's not. <laughs> he's still living life for his parents. So, so that's a little sad. So we talk 
about this parallel reality stuff a lot, shifting timelines and everything. Have you all had an experience? One of the reasons that I decided to do this show tonight, a couple of reasons, actually, is how many people have talked about how different the year 2016 feels. I mean, just since New Year's, just since Christmas and the holidays. And a couple of things are going on in my own life. Um, The first one is today, 89 years ago, my mother was born in Budweis, Czechoslovakia. My mom made it to the age of 89 She's 89 today. We're going to take her out to dinner and um, and uh, get her a birthday cake tomorrow. But on Christmas Eve, I thought she was going to die. I mean, really die. I thought she really was going to leave Christmas Day. She was that bad. It was that bad. And something happened. Um, and I don't want or need to get into too many details about that, but we have definitely changed a reality stream. And my mom is a different person right now than she was just a couple weeks ago. And at the same time, I have another story, and it's a story about a chicken. And this chicken is actually, if you're watching the blog talk screen, and it's in the rolling of the pictures, and if you're listening to an archived version of this show, you'll see it on, on the YouTube video. There's a picture of a black chicken rolling by with all of these other things about the Mandela effect, about having, you know, memories of history that don't quite match up. So how does this chicken play into the story? Well, it's a good story, I think. And this happened right around the time that things were shifting with my mother. So it happens that we live on a farm, a Tiramin farm here in rural Kansas, and we have chickens. I love my chickens. They're um, wonderful creatures to watch, and they provide us with wonderful fresh eggs throughout the year. And over Christmas in the first of the year, I had eight hens and one rooster, and I had four black hens, three brown hens, um, uh, two, two white hens. Is that right? Anyway, any eight, and I had four black hens. And um, one day I went out to check the chickens and put them up and put them in their coop because I don't leave them out at night because we have predators here. We have coyotes and other things, and and we have a very tight chicken coop. And I put the chickens up, and I counted the chickens, like I always do. And I counted seven chickens and one rooster. And I knew which hen was gone. It was the black hen, the smallest black hen we had, a kind of a squirrely black hen that um, a neighbor friend of mine down the road gave us. And... And she wasn't in there. And I looked everywhere that one can look in this coop. And we have an extra light in there because it's cold and it's winter, so it's very bright. And the coop is just, I think it's six feet by three feet. I mean, it's just a tiny little thing. Well, only one place for the chickens to roost, tiny little run, and then a pen out outside and I walked around and around the run around and around the pen there's no bushes there's nothing to hide under there's you know there's nowhere to go and I was just surprised this chicken was gone we clip our chickens wings so they can't fly over the pen during the day and they can't get out at all in the coop at night and um but I thought well maybe Something got in the pen somehow and drug off the chicken. It was sad. I didn't see any feathers. I didn't see any evidence of a hawk or anything taking a chicken. But, you know, things like that happen on a farm, and I didn't worry about it too much. Um, I did, however, the next several days, as I was going about my farm chores here, I would look under bushes. Uh, I kept an eye out for feathers. That's always a telltale sign Um, when coyotes or anything take a chicken like that. I mean, there's always evidence. And I never saw any feathers. I never saw anything. And I really wondered what happened. Um, And also, and I'm not sure I even told my husband this, honey, if you're still awake when you're listening, 
there'd been an owl, an owl hooting outside the bedroom window for a couple weeks. And symbolically, some of you might out there know what an owl means, right? An owl often is the harbinger of change or death. And I didn't know if this owl had anything to do with my mom. I also thought the owl could have somehow, even though they're usually predators, um, you know, in not when my chickens are out, might have picked up this chicken. So I was wondering about all of that. <sighs> Never saw the chicken. And then after, I guess, five or six days, I walked to the chicken coop to let the chickens out, as I do every morning. They're locked up tight until the sun rises, and then I let them out so they can wander around outside. And when I opened up the coop that day, out walked four black hens from the chicken coop. And you could have knocked me over with one of their feathers because there hadn't been that little squirrely black chicken in there for five or six days. I mean, I didn't write it down, but it was something like that. It wasn't quite a week, I think. And I just was astonished. I mean, she was back. And not only <laughs> was she back, this is our only hen who lays, um, she doesn't lay quite white eggs, but they're very cream color eggs. And every other chicken in the entire flock lays brown eggs or kind of purpley brown eggs. So that whole time she was gone, too. All I got was brown eggs. But that chicken's back. And she didn't just come back in the middle of the day, in the middle of the pen. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't even be telling you this story if it somehow she would have come back in in the middle of the day. I would have imagined somehow she would have flown or some strange chicken person in the neighborhood would have brought my chicken back after borrowing her for a while or something. I just, I don't know. I wouldn't have talked about it except for that she was, she showed up in the locked coop, in an absolutely locked coop. I put seven chickens and one rooster to bed one night. And when I got up the next day, I let out one rooster and eight chickens into the pen. That with my mom and a couple other things makes me think, you know, there's a timeline shift. And I don't know about you, but I wish I would have known about this earlier in my life. I wish I would have known about this even just a few years ago. Not so much about the pop culture and history thing, but about times in my own life, and, and particularly times I've had with, with my husband mostly, when we both would uh, remember something and we would remember it completely differently and we would both stand our ground and insist that what we remembered is absolutely unequivocally what happened and there's just no room for any denying it. <laughs> what, what we remember. And it may have to do with bringing something or seeing something or doing something. It doesn't even matter what it is. But, but people having these absolute vivid memories of things that the person right next to them, for whatever reason, has a different memory of. Well, isn't that kind of nice? I mean, it's nice for me. It makes me think of all those times when, when I might have really insisted or argued with somebody about what was real. Well, that was real for me. Um, as it was real for the other person, right? And then, of course, you can get really convoluted if you think about this, if you think about um, court cases, right, or um, witnessing um, witnessing crimes or things like that. I mean, it can get really, really convoluted there. So that could be kind of an interesting way of looking at it. So I'm going to check the uh, check the board here, see if anybody has their hand up. I don't see anybody with their hand up. And hide everybody in the chat room. But I have a couple more stories. Oh, Sherry Telford. <laughs> Hi, Sherry. How do you raise your hand? You press one, Sherilyn. Yes. So press one. Where are you? Let's see. We do have... Um, we have somebody who wishes to say something or just tell me what you're... Um, tell me what your area code is, Sherry, and we'll get you right on. 
Ah, there you are. <laughs> Excellent. I get to hear somebody else speak. I can put myself on mute and have a drink of water. <laughs> How nice of you to call. Hi, Siri. Hi, Candace. Can you hear me okay? <laughs> I can. You're on the air. Do you have a story for us? Well, I don't have a particular specific story, um, although I find this subject really, really fascinating. And I have lots of theories about how it happens. Um, in fact, it's really interesting to talk to my husband about this stuff because he's a must-have proof kind of person. And he likes uh-huh. to say that it's just people thinking they're all special snowflakes and whatever memory they have has to be real. And therefore, there must be this thing <laughs> called the Mandela effect. And uh-huh. <laughs> Nobody's ever wrong. <laughs> special snowflakes. Um, but um, the, the I had my iPad and then I couldn't get online with my iPad because I needed Flash. Long story, not important. But I I did take the quiz. I had taken it on, on the forum when you posted this subject I don't even remember one a few months mm-hmm. ago. And uh, mm-hmm. a couple ones, Berenstain Bears, most definitely was E-I-N, not A-I-N. I mean, definitely. Mm-hmm. No doubt in my mind on that one. Um, fruit Loops, it was a regular fruit, not F-R-O-O-T. And I know that because I'm a really visual person, and I can remember exactly what the box looked like. I don't know if they've mm-hmm. changed it. Is it F-R-O-O-T now? It is, and I I remember it like the regular fruit myself, and I too very very visual, and I I remember regular fruit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember that. We I wasn't allowed to eat sugar cereal except on Saturdays, and Fruit Loops was my favorite, so it was always the one I picked out, and I know exactly what the box looks like. <laughs> and then Sex in the City, I was actually just looking online to see if anyone had taken a photo of the original box set because I remember my sister in law had it, and we used to watch it. And I don't think she has it. It could have been VHS. I don't remember. It was so long ago. But I know for a fact it was sex in the city because the way they stacked the words in mm-hmm. was smaller than the. Like, I can picture it perfectly. There's no way it used to be sex and the city. They totally changed that. Right. Well, you know, some some of these memories, Cherry, people have, I mean, if you go and you read some of these sites, they – Sometimes people will go and they will find, like, I know that book is in the basement or whatever, and then they go find it, and then they find that the book then also reality stream changes. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I was, I was just talking about that. One of, one of my friends found her book, and it says Baron Stain Bears, and she remembered it being different. And I was like, yes, because the Matrix was all powerful. So one of the theories that I have, and I just want to put out there that I will go on record as saying I don't know. I don't know anything. But I have lots of ideas that I like to think and talk about. So the Matrix is one of them. We are in a reality where things are not necessarily how they seem, and there's a lot of control about how things look and what we're supposed to think about how things look and how we're supposed to behave in this reality. And there are, there. I think one of the mistakes people make as far as I'm concerned is that there is such a thing as an objective reality. There, We mm-hmm. each assemble every scene of our lives based on the filters through which we perceive this so-called reality. So it's not like what I am experiencing in this moment is, in any way the same as what anyone else is experiencing. The, the, and actually, mm-hmm. I don't know how many people out there have read Carlos Castaneda books, but the way Don Juan explains the assemblage point. So we are luminous beings. That, there's no doubt about that. We, we exist as balls of light that are, we, we happen to be housed in these bodies, but we're not, we're more than that. And in, with the old, Seers in Don Juan's lineage, the ancient Toltecs, the way they could see people was they were they were luminous eggs, and they had what they called an assemblage uh, assemblage point that it, it was like the entrance through which the rest of the world was perceived, and they're fairly fixed, and they, so they let in only a certain amount of information. There's way more information out there than we can possibly perceive, and and the perfect example of mm-hmm. that is is the light spectrum. You know, there's so much more beyond what's 
visible light, mm-hmm. and nobody's doubting or, or contesting that fact. Why isn't that undoubted with with the rest of our experience? That that's a perfect analogy for for what reality is. We're we're experiencing such a tiny portion, and there's tons of stuff that goes by that we just we either are not consciously aware of, and a part of us is aware of it on on one level, which could explain some of this stuff. Picks up something, and then and then it shifts. But the the assemblage point only picks up so much, and and our assemblage points are aware of everybody else's assemblage assemblage points, so they line up as best they can when we're in groups, so that people agree. Mm-hmm. Our our collective consciousness has that kind of power where where it can it can sort of mold what people's perceptions are, so that people can agree on reality when they're together. Mm-hmm. And and so that's one idea. And then another idea is that I love it, that and, idea. <laughs> another Great. mistake Super I think people make. way of putting. It. <laughs> another mistake people make is is thinking of time as a linear thing, and it, the way I think of time is more of a spiral or a circle, and you can touch any point in the quote past or future uh, just by you know turning your attention to it, and and you know when you when you. Mm-hmm access a memory, I honestly think you're touching that time on that spiral and, and you can change it. You can, and even neuro, neurochemically and, and neurologically, they've proven that every time you access a memory, it actually changes based on your current perception of where you are in your life. So, mm-hmm. so this spiral is happening and, and the spiral and the matrix go hand in hand perfectly so they can just sort of like poke, poke the spiral and it changes but it doesn't necessarily have to change for everybody because we only perceive a tiny bit. So, and then when you make decisions and it splits off and there's infinite universes and we're only perceiving a certain point and we can sort of hop back and forth between our different universes that we've split off and we, we, you know, bits of us are scattered all over the place when there's not major differences. And I think Dolores talked about this when there's not major differences, you can kind of hop back and forth between several different realities and nobody really notices any difference. But then sometimes you mm-hmm. manage to slip into one that's different enough. You're like, wait a second, I don't remember things being that way. <laughs> right. Oh gosh, that's, those, those are some really excellent ideas. Very good. Um, thank you so much for calling in. I I didn't know that. I, I've been meaning to read. I, I know that it's classic, but I have not gotten the Castaneda yet. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. It's, oh, it's, gosh. it's so well, helpful, to, especially the assemblage point is, is I think, one of the most helpful ways to to really, especially for me as a visual person, to, to understand how perception works. And my husband and I joke about how, how we so obviously live in different worlds. Like, we, we love to go on walks, and we used to live in a city. We now live out in the country, and it's so much better. But we used to live in a city, and we'd go on walks, and I'd look at all the, the rocks on the ground and the flowers growing in the, in the sidewalk cracks. And I would completely miss everything he was seeing. He'd be looking up at the walls, looking at all the graffiti. And he would note, you know, he would point out the really awesome graffiti, and I would point out the really awesome rocks. And we were walking in two separately different worlds right next to each other. Yes, absolutely. That That is something that, you know, they they tested students, I think, and lots of college students, you know, they, they make some – some sort of thing happens, some sort of scene happen, you know, up on stage, and, and they tell people to write down afterwards what happens to test people's memories, and everybody has a different memory of it. And so they, even in the mainstream, we we see that, uh, you know, we we agree that our memory isn't all the same, but I think the mainstream kind of calls it fallible, you know. And, right. And then... That, that Which it is. I mean, memory isn't perfect one. either. Of course, of course. But I think there, you know, the the mainstream more thinks that there is this absolute one, you know, absolute reality, and we all just have maybe slightly different versions of it. But you and I and others in our community talk about the fact that that they're all different, and that there isn't an absolute one, and that's where we part company. Right. <laughs> yeah, the the idea that oh, there's objective reality that works really well for the matrix, but it's not true. <laughs> mhm, mhm. 
Gosh, you know, um, I was looking at some of the other things we, we talk about this on on the forum, and, and there's this lovely gal from Hong Kong, and I'm going to get her name wrong, but it's Chow Dung, I think, Chow Dung. She, uh, the, I actually put this on the, uh, if you're watching the um, images scroll by on, on, the, uh, on the radio show, she actually has a, you might like this because it's a very visual, it's a visual graph on how, realities can line up behind each other that kind of it kind of matches some of what you've just said right there but what I really like what she talks about this she wrote this whole blog and she wrote it in English even though she's originally Chinese speaking Um, she she talks about the fact that in her theory two conditions are necessary for you to start experiencing the Mandela effect what do you think about this Sherry because she says that your consciousness needs to start expanding out of 3D, which I think is interesting. So, mm-hmm. for instance, um, that's why, just personally, no offense to your husband, <laughs> why I think, like, you know, the Mandela effect completely intrigues you and makes you go, oh, my gosh. And some other people who are still firmly entrenched in material 3D just shrug their shoulders and yawn and think think about it as being misremembering, you know? Yeah. And um, yeah. let's see, what does she say the second thing? Because I think that's true. And let's see, what does she say the second thing? Oh, um, uh, so she says, Chow Dung says, your consciousness has to expand out of 3D and your shifted timeline, how far away it is inconsistent to how fast you shifted in the timeline, the mechanism is ex- is um, explained below. I'm not quite sure about what that is. But but what she says is your so-called memory is just part of the information contained in the parallel reality you are experiencing at this moment, not what you actually experienced before this moment. They could be similar, but most people's conscious minds can't distinguish or they would be very different. This information in one parallel reality includes everything you can think of and probably more than you can think of because most human conscious minds capacity is incapable of processing all of the information, just like what you just said, you know, when you both go on the walk, mm-hmm. you know, you process some and your husband processes the other. Contained in one parallel reality. So every soul right. is different. And, um, yeah, and, and what she says is it's like the brain is being washed or refreshed two million times per second. Whoa. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot. Have you ever seen, um, you know, have you ever seen Bashar talk about this on on YouTube? It's it's pretty interesting. He says kind of the same thing. He says we're literally moving through billions of different realities every second and that the movement is just an illusion created by moving through these realities in that way. So we're always shifting through different realities. We're just lucky to be consciously aware, aware of that movement. And, um, yeah, actually, I've got a, another clip of Dolores. Maybe I'll end the show with it where she's talking about time. And uh, it kind of pl- it plays into this. It was something that she said before the parallel um, universes um, in the little clip. Did you get to hear Dolores? Did you hear did you, that I played a little clip of hers on the show? I Yeah, I did. I, I, I think there was a video somewhere of that. I feel like I'd seen her. Say yeah, that. that's it's from the yeah it's it's the video out there on YouTube. It's it's widely available. So um, yeah, yeah. But I just I I had I don't know that I've done that yet on the show, and it was a lot of fun for me to do. I just sat here with a silly grin on my face. Oh, and I see that we've got somebody else um, raising their hand too. So we'll get to you in a moment. Just need to make sure that that Sherry has said all she's wanted to say this evening. Yes. Yeah. And actually, I I share a birthday with your mom, and we're headed out to dinner in just a moment. So oh I'm not God, quite as old as your mom, birthday. but <laughs> getting up there. Thank you. Oh <laughs> you know, I, uh, if you would have if you would have asked me, I mean, I really didn't think she was going to make it. Not only, I mean, my mother was my mother didn't get out of bed for many many days, and she she wasn't speaking. She was barely eating. Um, she was gray. Um, she was crying. She, she was out of here. She wants mm. to have tattoos. Uh, uh, she wants her eyebrows tattooed. She's going to get her hair done today. <laughs> We're going to go. I, I know. It's absolutely. 
absolutely crazy what happened. And, and her voice is different, Sherry. Her voice is wow. different. It's just, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of that little old lady voice, a little shaky and a little frail. Mm-hmm. But her voice is different, and she is a different person. It was like a light switch. Uh, it's really uh, interesting. I, I'm sure I'll have more to talk about that. But I want to thank you so much for, uh, for coming on to the show. Yeah. Oh, thank yeah, you. Says, could she have had a could she have had a walk in? Yes, Lorraine. I actually thought thought that or or a walk out of some kind, <laughs> of, of some kind. And um, so thanks, Cherry. And you have a great dinner and happy birthday to you. And uh, thank um, you. Thank yeah, you so catch... much for being. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much for being awesome. on the show. And always <laughs> thank you so much for being a part of Dolores's original support forum. We love you. Oh, uh, I love the forum, and I love this show, and I'm going to catch the rest of it on the playback. <laughs> okay. Good night. Have a great dinner. My best to your husband. All right. Thanks. My best to your mom Bye-bye. and your family. I'm so glad she's still here. Thank you. Me too. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. So, um, okay. So, yes, we have um, Spirit Connection. Spirit Connection, what is your, um, either push the number one on your keypad or tell me what your area code is so that I know which number you're calling in on and we'd be happy to talk to you. So let's see. Um, Well, I don't see you raising your hand yet. There you are. Spirit Connection, let's see if you're here. Do we have you? Hello. 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 Hi, this is Candace. Who am I talking to? Uh, this is Maria. Can Hi, you hear Maria. Me? You had a uh-huh. hot. Are you Spirit Connection on on the chat room? I'm not, but maybe I came <laughs> up that way. I'm not. <laughs> um, I've been listening to the show from the very beginning. And I just made a couple of three notes, and so if you want to get Spirit Connection in right after me, I can throw it out there and then um, and then move on. You can move on with the show. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's mm-hmm. fine. That's I'd be happy me. to hear what oh. you have to say. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, this is Maria O'Hara, and I found out oh, about hi, the show today. Hi, hon. How are hi, you? Maria. I'm yes. so happy that you called in. Thanks. So just really quick then, I um, I was listening to the Mandala Effect, and I I didn't pass the test very well, but I feel that some of the problems or I feel that some of the issues may come up from the misinformation that comes from the media, and then we get all mm-hmm. confused because I can tell you I can hear news from the media when it happens, and then when it's reported, it's reported completely different. So um, I don't have much to say about that. But first, though, I do want to say I'm so happy about your mother, and um, <laughs> that's wonderful news. And that brings me to 2016 with my mother. She's going to be 88 next month. And from the beginning oh. of the year, this year, she is, um, and that's, you know, it's like a different way of looking at the shift or what's happening, Um She's talking to me, and she just says, oh, before I finished my question that I was going to have a question to talk to you about, I got the answer before I finished my sentence. And this is happening wow. to her often. And uh, and it's very noticeable, and, uh, and it, it's happened several times. She's like, what's happening? She just stops, and she goes, like, what's happening? I was... I was thinking of this question, and I got the answer before I finished my sentence. And amazing. The third thing I, it is amazing. And the third thing I wanted to just throw out there, in case people are recognizing this, is that I'm coming across people that talk to me about their dreams. I've always been into dreams. But instead of saying, I had a dream that I was in this building or I was in this room and I walked through the room, you know, the regular building and room dreams. This time now they say, but when I awakened, I felt that I knew that room. 
really well, or I knew that house. It wasn't, you know, like before mm-hmm. you talk about I was in a house. This time they, they mm-hmm. say, but I felt the house was so familiar. I knew that house. So that's mm-hmm. all I, I want to just kind of throw it out there, and, and then you can bring in the spiritual mm-hmm. people, uh, whoever else is on there. <laughs> I'm, but I, I noticed these differences since 2016. They're just kind of popping up, and I'm just constantly in an observation mode, like, like I'm getting feedback just by the surroundings of the relationships of people just kind of giving you feedback that something's happened by their actions, mm-hmm. by their comments, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I think so. I think, I think we're just widening our scope and our understanding of what's possible and what's going on, you know, what what is what really multidimensionality means, which I think is part of this. You know, I think our, our vision is, is widening. And, and, and Maria, you're going to love next week's show because we're doing dreams. The whole next show is about dreams. So tune in, tune in next week. I'd love to have you come back. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. And also with my mother, too, her frequency, her voice tone is, is higher and louder. And I have to say to her, um, uh, and, and very useful. And people are stopping her, and they're like, "Your voice is so young, and it's like switched, also like you know, like from the voice box." It's, wow! Because my mother's voice, my mother's voice is so different. I mean, it's it's just different. I would, you know, it's hard to it's not stronger. I mean, she's she's an elderly lady, but it's it's yeah. higher. It is higher. It's um, higher. My voice is That's also how my higher. mom's is too. It's higher. It's Exactly. That's, mm-hmm. that's the, the the difference too. That I I spent the weekend with her because I took her to a, a funeral um, at the coast, and and I noticed, and I go, there's a higher pitch here that's constant, and something's changed. interesting. Yeah, interesting. Boy, you got your other phone, and I'm I'm I will. in. Uh, okay. I am. Uh, I'm enjoying Thank the show so very much. much. For calling. You're Thank welcome. So much Bye-bye. for calling and so much for also being part of our community, Dolores' original support forum community. Beautiful Maria O'Hara, thank you so much. Thanks, Candace. Have a good day. Okay. Oop, I cut her off. I didn't mean to do that to you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for calling in. Okay. And now we're going to have spirit connection. So let me see. Let me find you. You are 530, and there you are. It is Spirit well, Connection. Hi, Spirit Connection. Do you want to go by another name, or do you prefer Spirit Connection? Hello? Hello? Uh-oh. Hello, Spirit Connection? There you go. Yeah, you'll want to turn your radio down or um, your computer on mute to be able to speak without feedback, please. Thank you. Thank you so much for calling. Okay. <laughs> Can you hear me? Spirit Connection, can you hear me? Well, I, I, I think she's just hearing. Um, I'm taking the reverb off. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Um, Good, because yes, <laughs> we've all just heard a few, <laughs> few minutes of the last yeah. show, or the last few minutes of the show. Yeah, go ahead and uh, mute your computer so that we can talk. Okay, and my name is Hi. Jessica, Thanks. and and I am Hi. part of the forum as well. I'm a QHHC <gasps> practitioner. Hi, Jessica. Hi. Hi. So happy to have you. <laughs> where where Thank do you, you live, Jessica? I live in Northern California. Um, well, I thank live, you for calling uh, in. Yeah, yeah, I'm so excited. I've actually wanted to talk with you for a long time. I've Well, I've talked to you on the forum a couple times, but I've had so mm-hmm. much um, crazy stuff come through my sessions that I've wanted to share on there, but I think I've been kind of waiting um, for the right time. <laughs> well, plus oh, I was sure. uh, – I just – had my youngest child too in at the end of November so it's kind of been <laughs> very busy. You're a new mom. Congratulations. Um, thank you. Um so 
I, <laughs> it's funny because um, my husband has been basically just obsessing over this whole glitch in the matrix and he's been on, <laughs> he usually likes to go on, on Reddit and, and you, and so he, it, it was kind of a little bit much for him when I first started the QHHT just because, you know, it can be a lot. It, I was ready, but that doesn't mean everyone, everybody else was ready. <laughs> So my family's mm-hmm. had to kind of, you know, broaden their consciousness and their mind quite a bit since since I've started. And um, so he, but he has been focused on the whole glitch in the matrix and he's been showing me all these videos and talking about stories that people are telling. And it's, and then all of a sudden um, I got the email today saying that you were going to be doing this show. And <laughs> And I was like, oh, okay, well, <laughs> first, of course, it's going to be synchronized. And so, um, and then I realized I was talking with him earlier, and then right before the show started, uh, or actually, actually as the show started, I heard you talking about, um, you were asking, has anybody had any experiences where it feels like there's a gap in time or time, you know, time, your timeline was just different? And I started thinking about it, and then all of a sudden it hit me. Of course, you know, it's the subconscious, but I <laughs> I was hit pretty strongly. And I sat down and I started, like, writing out my timeline of my life because I realized that throughout the past two years, whenever I would talk about when I lived in San Diego, I would always say, okay, yeah, it was six and a half years. And then I'm like, wait. And then I started really realizing that it wasn't. But my whole life, I've been like, oh, yeah, I lived there for about six and a half, seven years. And then while you were talking, I was writing down on a piece of paper, and I was like, okay, wait. And I was going through every single year, and I was like, all right, I moved there when I was in sixth grade, which was in 1999. And then I was like, okay, but then I remember I remember everything that happened after that, because it was really, there was some crazy stuff happening, and then I remember the Y2K happened, and I just had moved there at the end of that year and everybody was freaking out. And and then I remember we were in back up in Northern California in 2001 and I got in a car accident that fractured both my neck on both sides in 2002 and on all of my medical records that was on every time I would go to the doctor and they would ask me, when did you get in the accident? And I'd have to say it was in 2002. I don't go to the doctor often, but when I did, I used to. And so, so now I'm sitting here and I'm like, wait, a, hold, I don't understand. Like, and I was really like, my mind was blown. I was like, okay, no, 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 no. Because I know like <laughs> I moved there in 1999 but somehow I got, I moved back up here in 2001 and I got in the accident in early 2002 in spring because I was taking a college course and it was um, automotive technology and I, and I just wanted to learn <laughs> or no, it was auto, uh, it was the beginning of that and it was auto body repair and I was a tough girl or whatever. And I went there with my, I was, my had a neck brace on and my class was starting and I said, no, I'm going to go anyway. And I, and I remember when it was, and I was like, there's no way, there's no way how, and I all, and I, so I tried calling my mom. <laughs> so like, wow. We lived there for six and a half years, but according to my memory now, I, I don't, I don't understand. It was like one year. Wow. And, yeah, it's <laughs> weird because I would have gone, <laughs> I don't get, I don't get it. I'm like, really, like I said, my mind is blown. It's just, and we've been having so many weird things. Like the other day, um, my husband went and took two pillowcases for our couch cushions out of the dryer. And cause I have three boys and they are messy. And so he, <laughs> he was going to put them back on and he goes, no, I promise. I have both. And he's like, I straightened both of them out. And I, he said, look at, Kai Kai in my mid. He's like, Kai, did not just take the other one and straighten it out. And I hung both of them on the couch. And he was like, Yeah. And he said he watched him do it. And then I said, Okay, well, go look in the dryer. And he's like, No, they're not in the dryer. I'm like, I both of them. And I followed over there. 
and sure enough, the, <laughs> the other one was in the dryer. And he was like, there's no way, though. And that same night, we had guests, guests over for dinner. And he's sitting down eating, and he stands up just for a second, and he sits down, and he has a fork in his hand and a fork on his plate. And he's like, wow. Yeah, he's like, I have no idea wow. how I have two forks. He freaked out. He was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, and I was like, oh, okay, my I can't goodness. explain that one. <laughs> and I don't know. My goodness. It's this really is so weird. interesting. Like, yeah, there's yeah, a lot of weird. stuff we, happening right now. We, I, it's just since the year changed, I think, you know, just since we got into 2016. I mean, it's been changing, of course, but it's like yes. it's really ramped up. I I think what we have to do is, I mean, because we can, you can set your, you can get kind of scared if you, you know, if you get to, I mean, I, you know what that feels like. You just, you, your stomach yeah. just went through some through some of that right now. I think we have to, if you don't mind the suggestion, we have to think about it as being sort of fun and amazing and yeah, exciting. I agree. Because if we're, mm-hmm. I, if we're scared of it, it we're, it's not going to do us very good. We're, we have to think about, <laughs> we, we're going to have to take this a little lighter <laughs> if we're going to get yeah, through absolutely. it and, and think about the possibilities, you know. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. No, I do. I, this makes wonder this makes me wonder about your 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 kids and your especially your your newborn i wonder have you have you noticed do you think there's some of the new children the the crystal or star I do. children or i mean <laughs> i do i every everybody says that about them i mean i i know because i'm their mom but um I I do I'm a, so I'm a Reiki master and so I work with um you know I work with this, this uh, with spirit all the time and I, with the higher self becoming um a quantum healing hypnosis therapist I, my my oldest son was actually my first um person I've ever done a session with and his first mm-hmm. life that he went to was another planet and so mm-hmm. and I distinctly remembered in, in that moment Julia talking about her um, having her session and the man that she was doing the session for said, her, the higher self, the, the subconscious said um, that he, they weren't going to talk about that, not because he wasn't ready, but because she wasn't ready. And then I remembered her saying, like, what? Like, I'm Dolores' daughter. What are you talking about? And um, mm-hmm. and I just, and I remembered, like, right when he went to, when he said where he was and he said he was on a light grid and that he, um, he was above another universe, but the universe was just above, um, our universe and that he was part of a group of workers who would, uh, who protect the earth from asteroids and that they would stop asteroids from hitting the earth. And Mm -hmm. He went through an entire life telling me about that, and ever since then, um, every session or anything that we do, it's always another planet, another being. So I've, and also another Earth in a different dimension, um, all beings existing of only time. And I've done sessions on many different people, and um, all of them always are telling me about the new Earth. And at first it was, no, we haven't started yet. And then in October, I did a session. Actually, it was very interesting and extremely powerful. I did a session. Is it okay that I talk about this on the show? Absolutely. This is this okay. whole show is based upon <laughs> our work, honey. So you bet okay. you everyone loves to hear these stories. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Um, so... I so actually um the person that I did the session with was actually a very close friend of my brother's and this this all happened um I, it was just before I had my daughter and I was planning on doing it the weekend before and he goes, You know what? He goes, The only weekend I'm gonna be available is next Sunday. He's like, Can we do it then? And I said, Yes. So we made that happen. And I did this session. I realized that morning, just before the session started, I said, you know what I realized today is the day that Dolores passed on one year ago. 
And actually, um, I learned about her. I said I did say this in the in one one thing in the forum that I learned about Dolores that day, consciously, um, on the day that she passed, on the morning, and it was really crazy because I had no idea until after I was trained, and then I found out through um, a Facebook post. That was on the internet somewhere when I was searching for something for someone about QHHT. I was trying to show them something, and then I saw that that she that they said that, and I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't know. And I was like, wait. And then it took me a little process to find out. I learned about her from a, a Reiki master on the day that she actually passed away. So um, then uh, on that on in October on October 18th, I was doing my session. And so um, during his session, I had him talk with his guide, and um, there was a, a spirit guide that came through that was St. Germain. And I spoke with St. Germain, and um, that was really, really powerful for me. I've had incredible, incredible, powerful experiences. Um, during that session, I was told that um, his closest friend, uh, was alive during the time of Jesus and that that during a day that Jesus was sad, that he was depressed, he sat down and talked with him and he was back on his path. And so wow. it's been me really, yeah, really incredible. So, and actually that came about because I asked, because I said, I don't know why, but when I, when I, Ever I'm around him, I just uh, immediately think Jesus, and I thought, why is this? But in my intuition, my higher self, was telling me. So I asked that when I was told, and then he said, he said, well, I said, well, why do I always feel that? And he goes, no, he, he said, because he carries his soul carries a fragment of Jesus's energy. He has his essence. And so it's just been really crazy. But during that session, I'm sorry, there's so many things I'm trying to stay on track. During that <laughs> session, I asked if Dolores wanted to come through. And he said, yes. She, he goes, she's right here. And I was like, oh, okay. So when he started talking, I knew it was her because he, the way that he was, his voice sounded was exactly how she talks. And I was mm-hmm. like, okay, and you know, you can feel it when there's another energy there present. You can just, you know, you just feel it, you see it, it's, you know, they're there. And so um, I asked Dolores if, um, the, if we have now entered into the new earth. And she said, we have entered in now. And, and the session prior to that, I was also told that we have entered in now, that the process has started, but that at that point in time, I was told by the other, during that person's subconscious, and then also by Dolores, um, that she said the same thing. She said, we've entered in. She said, it could be a long time. She said, it could be a year. It could be a hundred years. I don't, she said, I don't know. And I was like, okay, so I don't know what you guys have been um, getting. And I've been curious because that was what I was told. And she asked me, um, you know, what what if I wanted to have any more questions. And I asked, you know, just if I was supposed, like how, why I found out about her the day that she passed on and things like that. But. Anyway, there's been so many, so many things coming through, and it's been yeah, we're we're definitely in it right now. And I did a session on my oldest son on the first of the year, and that's when I knew, yeah, everything is changing now. (laughs) (laughs) It's crazy. Well, you you're busy all over the place. You're busy with your kids, busy with a newborn, and busy with sessions and. Um, I can see there's a lot going on in your life. I'm so happy that you called in. You know, I wish, um, I wish, well, I I imagine being a a mother and knowing this stuff uh, with a newborn in my arms. I, you know, I, I, I didn't get into this work till my own children were in junior high 
kind of age, you know, high school yeah. age. So, so it's it's much it's different. I I I wonder how it would have been to raise children knowing what some of the things that I that I know now. I think it'll be interesting the kinds of talks that you can have um, with your kids and. I'm looking Absolutely. forward to hearing more about your sessions when you have time to even do any more with <laughs> with three kids and a newborn. Uh, congratulations, <laughs> though, for, for uh, Thank bringing so yet much. another uh, an, another life in into our incredible world. And and thank you so much for for telling our listeners about Dolores coming in through sessions. You know, she's she's doing that more and more, and. Um, I, I don't know what she completely what she's got um, up her sleeve, shall we say? But I, I know that she's contacting many, many of us and telling us that more is coming, more is coming. Um, my very last yeah, session, I believe that. Um, I, yeah, uh, she came through and spoke for about five to six minutes about how how our work, I mean, will change drastically along with with the planet. So, uh, and, and, you know, I, awesome. I don't know exactly for sure how, but I know that, um, that she's continuing to, to speak to us. So um, she's continuing to kind of guide us from where she is now. And there's, there's just very exciting days ahead. Definitely. I agree. I think that for her, it's, it's harder um, on the other side of it all to age time and I think that's definitely why during sessions when we're talking with people even when people are going into lives as other beings like with my son whenever he has gone into a life as another being and I'm being told things like well in human terms and in earth terms and things like that Mm -hmm. and they're trying Mm -hmm. to explain things and even when I'm talking on in his sessions and other other people's sessions I I've been, it's repeated over and over. It's like, human language is very difficult. It's very, <laughs> very challenging. <laughs> yeah, it is, and predictions. And then, you know, a lot of it has to do with, with our actions and how we are creating that reality in front of us. You know, they can't, they can't tell us, you know, it's all kind of predictions or it's where we're headed, but, you right. know, we just finished talking about this entire show, how that, you know, the individuals make different decisions and you combine them all together and, and other things happen. And and we've been told over and over again that our human brain just can't quite comprehend exactly yes. what's going on here. We right. can, you know, we can see the effects of some of it and we can, we can entertain ourselves and we can, you know, we can talk <laughs> theory all we want, but there's a lot that is just not going to make sense to us until, you know, we are in the next place as well. Well, listen, yeah. we're coming down to some uh, the last minutes of the show. I want to thank you so much for uh, for tuning in and for calling in. And I, I know you've got your baby right there in your arms. Mm-hmm. Give him a give him a big kiss for us all and um, thank you so much for calling in thank you thank you for doing this and you are highly respected and loved and just know that um, thank thank you so much thank you so much Jennifer well we'll see you on the forum okay okay (laughs) all right good night honey bye bye Oh, goodness. Well, let's see. You know, I had uh, more stories here that I could have told, uh, but uh, I think that that's going to be all we're going to talk about tonight, and we can save those stories for another day, or maybe some of those people can can call up and share share them with us live on another program. There's a lot to talk about in this subject. Parallel lives, parallel universes. Time shifting and the Mandela effect. Keep an eye out for it in your life. So thank you so much, all of you who've tuned in this evening, and all of you out there who are listening to an archive version in the future. And I'd like to remind those of you who are looking for a practitioner of Dolores' method that you can find them at Dolores Cannon. QHHT.com. That's Dolores Cannon, QHHT.com. And you can find out more about my own practice of quantum healing at NewEarthJourney.com. I also have another radio show on BBS Network called New Earth Journey, and it's on Tuesday nights 
And this coming Tuesday is Groundhog Day, and I'm going to feature a Groundhog Day story. So you may wish to tune into that. Come to my website, and you can find out how, newearthjourney.com. And next Friday's Quantum Healing with Candace show will be all about dreams and dreaming. And my friend and colleague, Nicole Radke, will join me to talk about our dream world and all the things that can happen during our time in slumber. And we're going to be taking calls and analyzing and decoding your favorite or more mysterious dreams or dream symbols. So you won't want to miss that show. I'd like to do lots of stories on dreaming. So until next Friday, sleep well and many blessings to you all. And good night.